my Adderall hasn't kicked in yet. So a lot has happened since the last vlog, namely being that uh, Mats was in the ER. Today is Saturday and yesterday I was planning on filming, vlogging, and doing a bunch of stuff. And at about 11, 10, 11, 12, I was washing my face and I got a call from Mots saying, I need you to meet me at the emergency room. And I was like, huh? At first he like said the name of the hospital, which is the name of the hospital where I was supposed to be getting my surgery. And so the water was running and I was like, what are you saying? And like, I thought it was something like I needed to call the hospital and like they needed some other information from me or something like that. And then I was like, wait, repeat what you said. And he was like, very chill. Can you uh, meet me at the ER? I got hurt. And so I burst into tears. Then there were some issues that arose trying to leave here with couldn't get my car out so I texted or I called Mats's brother who lives like right down the street and he came and picked me up we drove over to the hospital he was in the waiting room with someone from work who had brought him there and pretty much as soon as I got there he like gave me like a little bit of a rundown and then immediately kind of went back there and they had called him and we got expedited on like the fast track for the uh, emergency room which was great so basically what happened was kind of just like a freak accident. He was basically doing some stuff at work and his hand was near this door, trap door kind of thing. It, for some reason, just gave out and the thing went down on his hand. So thankfully it wasn't both of his hands. Thankfully it wasn't his head. That was the thing I was so, so, so worried about. It was his right hand, his dominant hand, which sucks and I, made a lot of dirty jokes immediately. <laughs> he basically just crushed his right hand. And so we were in the ER from, again, like 11.30 in the morning was when I arrived and we didn't leave till 5 p.m. Basically the entire time we were there, we were waiting to see if he was gonna need surgery. So he wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything and they weren't sure. So they did the x-rays and the x-rays came back inconclusive. They couldn't really see anything. They couldn't really tell what was going on. I don't know why. I think it might've been because it was like a very large open wound. The conclusion of it all with the the CT scans that they also did of his hand, fractured it in two places. He fractured the metacarpal that bone, whatever. This one right here of his middle finger, and then one of the ones in his wrist, but like a little bit lower down. They're both depressed fractures. Once it heals, and like the first like week to 10 days is like the most crucial, that he shouldn't have any mobility issues, which is great because he's upset about golf, obviously. And then the really gross part, and the thing that like is why they rushed everything and why he has to be, we have to be really careful for the next like seven to 10 days is where the depressed fracture is on his hand specifically. I'm gonna have to like lean over to this. It went to the bone. So a uh, laceration, I don't even like that. <laughs> this is such a struggle for me. A laceration to the bone and like a fracture, like all in like one spot is like very dicey for infection. So he's on antibiotics for a week. He's doing a lot better. I <laughs> did not handle yesterday so well. He was like a straight up champ. He didn't want to take any of the painkillers when he was in the hospital, like in case they were going to need to do surgery. The only time though that I did convince him to like take a little something for the pain was before they stitched him up, which was good because that was brutal. I didn't see anything, absolutely nothing. I took my glasses off, like couldn't even see from far away, but I was literally out of the room, my back to them. And I just started thinking about it and immediately got woozy, put my head between my legs. That didn't help. So um, within seconds, I just laid down on the ground and closed my eyes and a nurse comes over and she's in and she's like, you good? And I was like, oh, I'm a fainter. I'm a little woozy. And she's like, oh, did you see something? I was like, no, I just, I thought about it. She gave me an ice pack and I just put it on my chest and I had to make it about me as Moss is literally getting these like fat stitches in his hand. I'm just on the ground, dramatic as hell. So that was yesterday. He is sleeping now. He's already felt a lot better today. And then on Monday, we need to call the doctor and set an appointment to look at it. So he's gonna take the splint slash cast thing off. Apparently the only difference between a cast and a splint is like mostly kids only get cast because kids don't swell as much as adults. And so a splint is literally a cast with just the plaster on one side, but it looks like a, 
him looks like a whole ass cast. I'm staying on top of his antibiotic schedule. I'm not letting him get it wet, obviously. Elevating it constantly. And then tomorrow, if he's feeling up to it, we might go to some open houses. He said he's feeling up to it. He thinks he'll be able to go just fine. And he even got the doctor yesterday to tell me, he's like, Mott says you guys are going to open houses on Sunday. I think that'll be great. I was like, okay. <laughs> He has like a sling. I'm just a little worried if people like bump into him and jostle him because it is like the outer. So I might just like walk like a bodyguard. Like I'm Big Rob. That's a niche reference if you get it. Thinking of new home. Oh. So it's been a few days. I got my nails done. We've got a new set. How cute. I also do need to get my ring resized. It fits, like it's not gonna fall off, but it comes off a little too easily and like spins around too easily. So I need to make an appointment. Since my last vlog, we have submitted two offers to two different houses and we did not get either of them. Yay! The first one I was not hopeful for at all. When we walked into it, I fell in love. It became my new number one house, my ultimate dream house. There was just something so special about it. It felt like a fairy tale. Like it had that cottagey vibe, but specifically there was like something like, I don't know, magic in that house. And I loved it. If we had the means, I would have bought that house for $3 million. I knew that somebody else felt that way about that house and had the means to do that. We didn't even get to counters on that house. I think what it's gonna end up going for is gonna be like at least like $700,000 over asking. Then the other house we submitted on was definitely one that needed a lot of work. It's really small. It's about like a thousand square feet. It only has one bathroom, which <laughs> I've got IBS and that does not work. This house was built in like 1910 or very early in the 19 teens, 19 teens, you know what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say. It was well, well, well below our budget. So we thought that we would be able to, you know, do an addition eventually onto it. There are also um, no closets. You open like the closet door cause legally you have to have a closet in order to call it a bedroom. You open a closet door and it was like five inches and then just a concrete slab. No, no racks, nothing hanging, no bars, just, Okay, for sure. But there were 54 offers for that house. 54. 54 offers. And 24 of those offers were cash. Over asking. To get to the counter stage for most houses, or at least the houses in our budget, you have to offer at least $200,000 over asking. At least. That's just to play ball. Just imagine that many offers, cash. So we didn't get that house either. Today is officially three weeks after Matza broke his hand. And last Friday, we went to a hand specialist. Say goodbye to this cast. They basically told us, which was so interesting, he had like an extra part of his bone. So like the bone that's right here, like your middle finger, the bone right here at the bottom, like the metacarpal or whatever. I forget what he calls it. I think he called it like a wing or something like that, or a sail. A small percentage of people have very large like ends of those bones. And I guess why at the ER they were having trouble reading his x-ray was because they could tell there were bone fragments there. They could tell that it was broken, but they couldn't really see where that fracture was. So it turns out he had like a very abnormally large bone sale or whatever here. And what happened was that just like crushed it. But if he didn't have that, they were like, this would have been such a brutal thing. You would have needed surgery. This would have been really hard to heal from and like would have affected you for the rest of your life. But you had this bone thing there that saved you. So he essentially had a superpower. He uh, did not know he had and got to uh, utilize it in the only time he's probably ever gonna need it and now it can just never happen again. <laughs> they took the stitches out today and he still has the brace on. It's a lot smaller than the one, like the cast cast. It's very smelly. 
So if anyone has any tips on how to clean it, let me know. He is definitely frustrated and fed up and really, really done with it, which I do have to keep reminding him that he crushed his hand, had an open fracture in two places, and that doesn't usually heal within a couple of weeks. I'm always appreciative of him. This hand thing has really, really uh, solidified that because he picked up so much slack when I had COVID, when we both had COVID, but then when I didn't really recover and have been dealing with long COVID, he does does so much that he can't not do now. So now I have to do it. And I'm like, oh wow, I forgot how hard all of this stuff was. Also, can we talk about how good it is that I rescheduled my surgery? It's like I'm psychic. Like it's like I knew he can't lift anything. He can't carry anything. He can't drive. I wasn't gonna be able to drive or lift anything or carry anything or do anything like that. So if I had gotten the surgery, we would have had someone, we would have needed someone to come stay with us. Like we would have been absolutely screwed. Good call on me. Good call. Yeah! That's gonna be like an escape thing, right? I just got a package in the mail. I ordered this, I was not sent this. I buy direct. They're so cute. Truthfully, I should be wearing these like all the time because I can actually see myself. Blurry, clear, blurry, clear. Aren't they so cute? You don't have to get prescription like in them. You can just get regular sunglasses and they're even cheaper if you don't have prescription in them, but they're so, 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 so affordable. And that's always what stopped me from getting prescription sunglasses before. Wow, I buy direct. This is kind of essentially like a free brand deal for you. So reach on. I'm just like stoked about this. These were like less than a hundred bucks. I think I paid maybe like 60 bucks, 80 bucks. I just got a notification that another package arrived. We're gonna open that too. So I got two things from Sephora. This is just a repurchase of a sample size or a trial size mini that I bought of this during the Sephora sale. This is the Tower 28 Daily Rescue Facial Spray. This is so good. I didn't even realize how good it was until I stopped using it. Like I ran out within a week. My skin was not as good. National Eczema Association approved and it's the happy solution for angry skin. It just like helps with like redness and truly for me, it's helped with like acne and inflammation and I just spray it on my face before I do like a toner, but it's also kind of like a toner. I love this. Then the other thing I got was a sunscreen because I'm almost out of my super goop glow one. This is the Biosense. Biosense? I don't know how to pronounce anything. And this is their Squalene and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. This has really great reviews. It's way smaller than I thought it was going to be. This is really small. Then I got a lot of samples. Um, the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes Universal Volumizing Mascara. Little sample of that. I've heard wonderful things about that mascara. To keep it in the uh, Rare Beauty family, because I've loved everything I've tried from them so far. Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation, and it also comes like a little primer. And then a little Whey Set Detox Shampoo, Hair Oil, and Leave-In Conditioner. I don't know if I used points with this. I think this might've been like a couple hundred points, or this was like one of the, where you en enter on a code. I don't know. I really wanna be productive, so I'm gonna try to be productive. And you can either watch, you can join in, and if you decide not to, that's also okay. I have zero judgment at all. Productivity is, it's a capitalist scam. Yep, I said it. But see, now that I've said that, I'm like, fight the system, Megan, don't be productive. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. If I wrote you a song, if I got every word, Perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper Would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem If I posted a letter